okay. Um, but, you know, as long as my main message got through that uh, and, you know, anyone who's struggling with anything, especially if they don't know how to start a problem, um, don't be shy. Reach out. This is totally a judgment-free zone. And so keep that in mind. <clears throat> All right. Because um, it may have been many, many years since I was a student, but I have good reason to remember what it's like to struggle as a student because those struggles have never ended. <laughs> They're just applied to higher level things. Uh, well, okay, not all the time, but <laughs> so, um, so closer to that than you all think. Um, I think some professors like to portray themselves like, oh, we are all knowing gods and like, get real. Um, <laughs> so nothing can be fair from truth. We're just as buffoony as anybody. Um, we're just really well-trained monkeys at certain things. No. Okay. No. Um, all right. So, let me flip over to... Um, all right. So, I actually want to go back and forth between MATLAB and this uh, document. Okay. So, I need to share my old desktop. Come on. Okay. Um, all right, so hopefully you have my fun with eigenvalues document up in front of you now. Um, I need to introduce some terminology or notation, and then I'll uh, go over to MATLAB. And actually, I do have a problem from the book that I want to have in front of me. Um, okay. All right. And things I kind of rehearsed this over a weekend, so hopefully it goes reasonably smoothly now. Um, so I want to talk about the notion of a stochastic matrix. So what is that? It's a matrix in which every entry, so AIJ, Um, the way you interpret that is a probability. Um, so certainly all of the entries of A um, need to be um, between 0 and 1. Um, now I'm going to refine this definition a little bit. Um, so A is left stochastic. if it's um, columns uh, sum to one. Uh, so in other words, if you add up the entries in every column, um, you'll get one. And the opposite is it's right stochastic. If it's uh, rows uh, sum to one. Um, Okay. All right. Now I, I'm going to give you an idea as to why um, we have a name, why we call it left and right in these two cases. Um, so I'm going to let I define a vector e. just to be a vector of all ones. Ah, dang it. Hold on, everything will come back in a second. Okay. Um, so here I have a column vector. Of all ones. Um, so then, um, what I could say is, 
if A is right stochastic, but that means if I take this matrix A and multiply on the right by the vector E, then I get E itself back. Um, and what that means, this is the same thing as the statement up here. All of its rows sum to sum to one. Whereas if A is less stochastic, so my computer is really slow and it's really driving me crazy. Then I could do the following. I could multiply by E on the left, but if I do that, by the laws of matrix multiplication, I have to transpose and make it a row vector. And that is equal to E transpose. Uh, so this is, so here I'm saying that the, um, uh, all of the columns sum to one because every element of this vector is what you get by adding up all of the entries in some column of A. So all those, and E is all one, so those turn out to be one. Okay. Now, um, one property that any kind of stochastic matrix has is um, So, so stochastic matrix, whether it's right or left, um, its eigen, its largest eigenvalue is always equal to one. Okay, so that's something that'll be um, important later. Now, um, so an important it's an interesting application of stochastic matrices is. In um, searches, like Google searches, okay. Now, so a um, ah, dang it. Okay, a left stochastic matrix. I can't type today, <clears throat> is useful in uh, Google searches. And I'll explain how. Um, I'm going to say that let AIJ be the probability of going from um, Web page, um, web page J, whoops, web page J to web page I directly. So in other words, in one click. So you're on, you're currently surf to page J. You have whatever links that page J offers, uh, to, and then you click on one of those, and that takes you to this web page I. Now, uh, what that means naturally is that number one, this is an absolutely ginormous matrix because it represents literally every page on the World Wide Web. Uh, also, most of the entries will be zero uh, because. Um, because any page that you're on, it's only, only going to link to a few pages, uh, or possibly several of them, but certainly not everywhere. Um, and it's a left stochastic matrix because from that page, in one click, you're going to go somewhere. Um, so that's so that's why the, the probabilities in all the columns will uh, sum to one. Okay. Um, the rows are not necessarily going to sum to one because any given page I, um, you're not necessarily going to go there ever. So that'd be interesting. Like, what web pages out there that have been created and no one has ever visited them? Kind of depressing, actually. Um, okay. Now, 
So if we have this matrix that represents a probability of going from one place to another on the World Wide Web, um, so then um, A squared, its entries have a probability of navigating in two clicks. So I go from uh, page J to page I, and then from page I to go to page K, then an entry of A squared represents a probability of going from page J to K, uh, again, in, in two clicks. Um, so in general, um, A to the N, those entries, represents a probability of going somewhat to a certain page. It's going from, uh, so page J to page I in N clicks. So following N links. Oh, got a typo there, probability. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a left stochastic matrix in MATLAB and uh, let's see what happens as I take powers of it. If anyone has questions at any time, you know, definitely shout them out. Um, okay, so let me get a diary going. Okay, so I wanna make a random five by five matrix. Oh, I want format short. I don't need that many decimal places for this. Okay, so here's my five by five matrix. But the trouble is I need to make it less stochastic. So I need to um, make sure that all of these columns, the entries sum to one. We can see that's definitely not true here. Um, so I need to take each column and divide it by their column sums. Now I'm going to have a rather freaky MATLAB expression that will do this, but I'll, I'll pick it apart for you. So I'm going to make this vector that has all ones. Okay. Now, here are the column sums. If I take S and define it to be E transpose times A. These are the column sums. So, um, so as you can see, if you add up all the entries in this first column, you get this 3.1023. All right, so what I need to do is I want to divide the columns by these sums. So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, divide this matrix. So all right, really, I'm going to multiply this matrix by the inverse of this. So I'm going to take. All right. So this is this will do the job. Now, what is actually happening here? S is my row sums. Diag of S creates a diagonal matrix with these entries on the diagonal. The divide here is I'm going to take this matrix A and multiply it by the inverse of this. Now, the inverse of this is just um, taking one over these. Um, alternatively, I could do this um, A times. The matrix obtained by taking one over V, so one dot divide S. I have to put the dot because I'm dividing by a vector. So here I'm taking one over these guys, putting them in a diagonal matrix, and I multiply. So either one of these will do the same thing. So here I've scaled the columns. So diag of a vector 
makes a diagonal matrix with V on the diagonal. A forward slash B is the same as A times B inverse. Well, if we go the other way, A backslash B, that is, it, A gets inverted times B. This one is useful for solving systems of equations. Uh, so basically solving A equals B. So that's what the forward and backslash operators do when you have matrices on both sides of the operator. Okay. So by multiplying on the right by this matrix, I need to multiply on the right because I want to scale the columns. If I multiply by a matrix like this on the left, I'd be scaling the rows. So here I'm doing a column scaling to make these sum to one. Any questions about what I just did? Now, if I take the row sum of this matrix, I should get all ones. And thankfully, I do. Although, as you can see, because it says 1.000, it's not exactly one, but there's a little bit of round off error. But it's, it's, it's a, for practical, all practical purposes, it is one. OK, so now I have a left. So. A is now a left stochastic matrix. OK. So let's assume that this matrix corresponds to five web pages. And these are probabilities that a user is going to navigate from one of these five pages to another one of the five, these five pages. So we have a five page local World Wide Web. Um, so here's the probabilities of going from one page to another in just one click. So now I'm going to take powers of this matrix. So here we have squared. And I'm going to keep taking powers. And I want you to watch what happens and tell me what you see as I keep taking increasing powers. What seems to be happening to the matrix? Is there any particular pattern that you might notice? With these numbers, it's it's kind of like each like check. Oh, well, that audio broke up so badly, but I think you got the right idea. <laughs> um. Oh, whoops. Okay. Um. Yeah, all the columns are the same. Um, and it didn't take many powers to make it happen, but certainly in the limit, as the power exponent goes to infinity, we will get all columns being the same. Um, and in terms of the interpretation, these are the probabilities of going to page one, two, three, or five ever in any number of clicks. Um, so it make so in other words, before it's a probability after a certain number of clicks. But if a number of clicks goes to infinity, then where you start becomes irrelevant um, if you have any number of clicks to get there. So that's why it makes sense that all the columns end up being the same. All right. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the largest eigenvalue of A is 1. Um, what we can also say is this column, you know, that, that's, that all of these are equal to, is a corresponding eigenvector. Um, now, this is what I actually want. I want a probability of going to a certain page ever. Now, 
Um, if I go back to my documents. Okay, so now since so we're talking about a left stochastic matrix. Um, a left stochastic matrix satisfies, as I mentioned earlier, E transpose A, all right, so equals, ah, really can't type today, E transpose. And what that means is E, the vector of all ones, is a left eigenvector of A with eigenvalue one. Um, now, what you would have learned about if it came to eigenvalues and eigenvectors in your linear algebra class is this equation. So here X is a, now when you learned about this in your linear algebra class, X was just called an eigenvector, plain old eigenvector. So it's actually a right eigenvector. And going the other way, if we're multiplying by vectors on the left, Um, so this is a left eigenvector. All right. So for a left stochastic matrix, a vector of all ones is the left eigenvector. Now, every eigenvalue has a right eigenvector and a left. So for a left stochastic matrix, like what we've been dealing with. Um, the right eigenvector um, for the eigenvalue that's equal to one is the um, uh, Is probably going to, to from i to j in any number of clicks. Right. So that's what we really care about: is what's the probability of navigating to any page eventually? So this eigenvector, which is the one that I was found by um, multiplying by a re by itself repeatedly, is used in the algorithm of Google's, which is called page rank. So I've just given you a very watered down version of the idea behind Google's PageRank and how it ranks search results uh, by computing these probabilities. So what Google does whenever you're doing a search is it has its um, uh, matrix representing uh, link probabilities and it's computing an eigenvector of its matrix corresponding to the largest eigenvalue one. And, um, and it's uh, sorting your search results based on the elements of that eigenvector once it has it. Now, a Google search, of course, is supposed to be fast. So it has to have a very fast way of doing this. And um, certainly Google has all the computing power that you can imagine. But even then, for such a large matrix, this is a big job. Um, so, what I showed you in MATLAB um, so we can get this eigenvector of link probabilities if 
by taking powers of A. But multiplying a matrix with itself, that's a terrible idea. And if you, if you can avoid it, because that's a very expensive operation. An n by n matrix, if you're multiplying with itself, that takes on the order of n cubed floating point operations. So if n is large, it's going to take forever. But we don't need a matrix that has this magic vector in every column. We just need one of these. Instead, we can use a power method. Um, and what does the power method do? It finds the largest eigenvalue of a matrix and its eigenvector. Really, it, it finds the eigenvector. Once you have that, you can get the eigenvalue. So here's what I'll do. I'll, um, I need to choose an initial vector. I could choose anything I want as long as it's non-zero. Um, sorry, the Teams window is blocking my view of my MATLAB screen. It's really aggravating. Um, all right, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to uh, choose initial vector X, a random vector of length five, and I'm going to normalize it. Uh, I divide by its magnitude, so I want it to be a unit vector, magnitude one. Oh, sorry, I goofed. I don't want to set it equal to the norm. I have to divide by it. I'm supposed to get a vector here. Yeah. Um, okay, this is my initial guess. So this is a vector that has length one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by A. And then I will normalize it again. So it's always going to have magnitude one. OK, and once again. Watch what happens. What is happening? From as I go through these iterations, I keep multiplying by A. What's happening to a vector now? And here's a previous one. What do we notice about the two? Yeah, this iteration has converged. So X is the eigenvalue. Well, oh, sorry, X is the eigenvector for the largest eigenvalue of A, which because it's stochastic, it's one. Um, all right, so so that's a demonstration of the, the, the power method. So its job is to find the largest eigenvalue uh, of, well, it finds the eigenvector for the largest eigenvalue, and then to get the eigenvalue, we compute a Rayleigh quotient which is just because lambda is a Greek letter commonly used to refer to an eigenvalue. I can just do X transpose A times X. Really, I it's this, but X is a unit vector, so this expression is going to be one anyway. But and sure enough, it's one. So I'll fill in some details here. Um, so to quickly obtain the right eigenvector, part to A's largest eigenvalue, what Google does 
is what I just showed you. It uses a power method. Um, So all it has to do is basically keep multiplying by a. Ah, dang it. Okay. Now, because uh, so Google has their hardware optimized so that matrix vector multiplication is as fast as possible, but this is a good method. There are better methods for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which you could learn about next semester in, in my class, Math 610. Um, but, um, but here, uh, based on the need for, 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 for speed and all, all you're trying to get this one eigenvector, uh, Google's determined that this approach is best, just to keep doing this repeated multiplication. And that gives you, you know, several probabilities. Um, what's interesting is, back when I was a student at Stanford, one of my fellow students, um, had asked me for help about the power method. I was explaining the power method to him. And uh, he actually, when he graduated, he uh, started his own company that made use of a power method um, for uh, search. And uh, his company actually was bought by Google and he made like hundreds of millions of dollars off of it. Um, my advisor, Gene Golub, he also helped uh, the student substantially uh, with uh, power method and various things. And now I'm thinking, dang, I should have been more involved in what he was doing because I could have made bank. Um, in fact, when the company was bought by Google, uh, this former student um, gifted my advisor with some Google stock. <laughs> well, um, Well, there's little opportunities like that, but uh, I feel like I let one get away there. <clears throat> Dang it. Okay. Um, now, um, but the thing is, what if you don't want the largest eigenvalue? What if you want the other ones? That's not so easy. And that's something, you know, again, in a class next semester, I'll talk more about it then. But I want to show you an interesting demonstration of a power method that's aside from Google of what strange behavior you can get. Yeah. And it's actually from one of the exercises um, in the book. Uh, so let's make a three by three matrix. Five, one, two, one, five, two, 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 four. Okay, now I'm gonna show you here are the eigenvalues of this matrix. So the MATLAB function i will just go ahead and compute them. All right, two, four, and eight. Now, um, I'm going to make a random vector again. Um, and make it a unit vector. And I'm going to try the power method on this matrix. So I'll do the same thing as before. So if I keep going, dang it. notice all of the entries of this vector are pretty much converging to one another. Right, that one three is a holdout and it's kind of annoying me. Okay, there you go. Finally fell in line. So this is a vector that um, all components are equal. And in fact, um, if I take this vector and square it, all the components are one third. So um, this is what you get when you take a vector of all ones and you normalize it. Its Euclidean length is three. So you divide by the square root of three and that's the vector you get. So, so vector one, 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 is the eigenvector, uh, just, you just normalize it. And then the largest eigenvalue is eight. So that's what it finds. So, so a power method did its job. It found the right um, eigenvector for the largest eigenvalue of eight.
Ah, I'm so embarrassed. My typos. So here's what I can do. I can make my initial guess. Orthogonal. To my eigenvector. So I'm going to make another random vector. I want it to be orthogonal. To the vector. One, one, one. So I'm going to make a vector of all ones. So I want X to be orthogonal to E. And here's how I can do that. Orthogonal projection. So I'm going to say X is equal to itself minus E times E transpose times X. E times E transpose, that's an orthogonal projection. So I'm taking X and projecting it into the space belonging to E. Although I have to divide by this factor, like this is normalized. So here, this makes, modifies X so that it's orthogonal to E. So in fact, I can check for orthogonality. Here, this is a dot product. So if I take E transpose times X, that's a dot product of E and X. It should be zero because they're orthogonal. And sure enough, it's essentially zero. There's a little bit of round off error, but times 10 to the minus 17, that's basically zero. All right. So now I'm thinking, supposedly, if I use power method, this initial guess should get the second large, largest eigenvalue, which is four. Because if I keep, so this vector has nothing to do with a vector one, one, one. And if I keep multiplying A by it, it should still have nothing to do with a vector one, one, one. So let's find out how that goes. So I'm going to normalize it. All right, so here's my starting point. So I'm going to say x is equal to a times x. And then I'm going to uh, normalize it. Let's see what happens. Notice the last entry is getting smaller. going to zero. So you might think, OK, I'm getting something different now. Also, if I take this expression, Rayleigh quotient, to get eigenvalue, it would be four. So I think, oh, this is going well. But now I'm going to show you more decimal places. And I'm going to keep going. So watch this last entry here. Still getting smaller and smaller. So this seems to be still going well, being cut in half roughly. And I probably could have stopped here already. But tell me what's happening now. What do you see? Someone on I'm sorry, Pete. The, the bottom entry is growing again. Yeah. So this is unexpected and unfortunate. And what's going to happen now? Let's see. We'll keep going. Now they're all comparable in size. And all the entries are converging to each other. Um, and that's what would happen if I kept going. Um, so now I'm going to repeat this. Um, okay, I need to recreate this vector. It won't be exactly the same, but uh, 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this, but now I'm going to, instead of showing you the vector, I'm going to show you the eigenvalue we get from it. So at first, it looks like it's converging to four. And it's getting very close to that. In fact, it looks like it's four in almost all decimal places. Oh, wow. It converged to four, but now there's some resistance. If this were a sporting event, it's like the eigenvalue of eights making a miracle comeback after seeming certain to go down in defeat. Um, but it rallies impressively, much to four chagrin. Um, and now it's rapidly converging all the way to eight. And that's where it would stay. Now, that's a pretty strange thing. And it seems to be converging to one result and then suddenly takes a sharp turn and converges out to something else entirely. Why, why would that be? What would cause something that odd to happen? Any idea? The key lies here. I said, these are supposed to be orthogonal. And I said, well, for all, whoops, I need to restore my initial ve vector. Okay, here it's exactly zero. Um, although if I normalize it. Okay, there it is. But but notice before it didn't say that. It said it was um, times ten, the number times 10 to the minus 17. That's the key right there, is that nothing in this world is exact. Um, as long as the vector x stayed orthogonal to the vector 1, 1, 1, then um, this iteration would converge to the second eigenvalue of 4. But it didn't stay that way. And the reason why is you keep multiplying by A, that introduces a little bit of round off error. So if I were to keep multiplying by A, like I was doing in the iteration, um, okay. Not sure why it's happening now, though. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, so something like this. If I take this dot product, it's supposed to be zero, but it's not exactly zero. And that is a problem. That this vector right here is supposed to have no component in a direction of that eigenvalue for the eigenva eigenvector for the eigenvalue eight. The trouble is there is a small component, a very small component. And because 8 is the largest eigenvalue, that one will over time get amplified until it can no longer be ignored. And that's why the iteration took this sharp turn. It started converging towards one thing and then suddenly converged to another. Because that round off error was always there. And at some point it got amplified um, and then just took over. So. These are the sort of things that can go wrong in numerical analysis because of that error that's um, present in every single operation. Um, so I basically created a situation where it would uh, be lurking and then rear its ugly head and wreck everything. Um, and that's an unusual situation. But these are things that can happen. And it really does happen in certain applications where you're competing a solution to some problem, everything seems fine, and all of a sudden, it just goes crazy on you. And at, at, at first, it seems so mysterious. But then you look into why, and it's like, oh, okay. Rounding error or something of that nature. So these things do happen, and not just in contrived homework problems like this one. Um, so 
beware. Um, and this is this is what makes um, numerical analysis uh, a rather um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was making sure that all four of you were still here because uh, yeah, yeah, Kaylee, you disappeared for a second. But, uh, okay, um, that's what makes this field so adventurous, and that things like this can happen that never happen in the corresponding mathematics carried out on paper, where there's never any round off error. Um, so, uh, so I want to show you um, uh, an example of that. Okay, questions about what happened there? Questions? Did, did anyone think of any questions about the MATLAB problems while I was doing all that? Or you're just tired because it's the end of the day. <laughs> well, it's almost the end of the day. <laughs> um, I should <coughs> I should mention my colleague Marco Gerritsen, the one who will be speaking to you all uh, next sometime next uh, in October. <coughs> um, she was telling me about how one time uh, she was giving a talk about the mathematics behind Google. So touching on the same themes that I just was. Although she was going into a lot more detail. Um, and you know she had an audience if so in the Stanford area, you know, people from Silicon Valley companies and so forth. And she made a remark about um, what Google does with its search results, like like you know, for, for its business model and that sort of thing, and and some people got really offended. Like Google never manipulates search results, and um, and the whole talk just kind of went south from there. Um, and uh, but you know, I mean, they're a business, I mean, so that's, that's that's bound to um, enter it, into it sometime. In fact, one thing I mentioned was that the, the kind of matrix that Google works with for its results is not entirely what I showed you. It adds on another term that comes from uh, personalization uh, to customize search results for you, and they're actually mum about how they come up with it. Um, you know, it's, it's one of their uh, business secrets. So, uh, so, so who knows what they're doing? But and you know, Google has the motto, uh, "Don't be evil," which I wish certain other tech companies would adopt. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that here. Um, and I'm not sure if Google's necessarily lived up to it themselves because I use and I use Gmail as I'm sure at least some of you do too. Um, and the things that pops up is like, okay, you're looking through my email to show me ads. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Well, um, and okay, it's not as creepy as Facebook, but still. Okay, so. Um, but yeah, the, uh, um, but yeah, I, I am interested in knowing, you know, for each of you, you know, if, if I don't already from you asking me questions outside of class, um, you know, how things are going uh, with with this assignment, where you're at, um, you know, any struggles that you might have, um, you know, just to make sure that this doesn't become some stress test for for any of you. Um, so I think really, I think only for um, at most two of four of you, I have a good idea of that. Um, but I, I want to um, see how this is going for, for, for everybody to, because that helps me steer the class. Um, so, um, and uh, if, because, uh, so, so this time, um, I'll say that if I don't hear anything from you, then you're leaving me no choice but to assume that everything is going swimmingly. Um, so I'm just going to warn you that I will make that assumption. Um, now, if that's true, then great. But at the same time, I have to keep in mind, you know, this is MATLAB, so get real. Um, <laughs> so, um, I don't think ever anyone ever finds that easy. Um, okay, but so last chance for any questions about anything in the last six minutes. I don't. I don't have a question. A question. But. but I the echo is like ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I was doing that. Okay, it stopped. All right. So I don't have a question, but I did want to clarify that it's not necessarily going swimmingly and just going extremely slowly. 
like I feel like I'm on number 12 and like we talked about that one in class so I would like I just took a break on it because I was like let me just go figure out what was said in class again so I took a break and started working on other homework but that's where I'm at so that's why I don't have any questions yet okay all right that's that's that's, that's, that's good to know um so um and certainly, you know, you're, you're all taking over classes. You know, you, I think all of you are dealing with some form of real analysis. Uh, so my sympathies there. Um, I think most of you are dealing with um, uh, 605, right? Uh, uh, differential equations. So also adventurous. Um, <laughs> so I did teach that class several years ago, and I'm happy to not do it again. Um, so uh, actually, I do want to mention about that. Um, I'm going to paste a link uh, a type of link into the chat um, now I'm not really I'm not doing it for this class of 685 and doing everything in canvas but I want to make you aware um, of what's going on on my web page okay Okay, actually, one ticket. Oh, actually, I'll I'll also show you my web page, um, and this is something that I recommended you bookmark anyway. Just my web page in general, just because there's useful stuff there, um, besides pictures of my cats. Um, but uh, if I go to courses. Uh, so I have websites for uh, many, many classes that I've taught going all the way back to when I started here in uh, 2009. Um, so in, let's see, it was in fall of 2015 is when I taught uh, 605. So if I go there, then here's my site for that class. Um, and I have here... Um, like my notes uh, from all the different topics. Um, I don't know if I have anything else here. Oh, yeah, these are the problems that I picked out, but uh, let's see. Yeah, so really for this site, it's this page that will be of interest. Uh, you know, uh, videos of my lectures, uh, the, the notes might give another all, um, a perspective you know, explaining the various things. Um, and I have that for so many classes, like I said, pretty much every class I've taught here. So I just want to make you aware of that uh, uh, resource. But here's where I should also tell you that during my entire time here, I've never taught real analysis. So you got to look for that one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I don't see myself asking. I, I do request to teach certain classes of interest, and I don't see that one on my priority list anytime soon. Um, OK, but um, one thing I want to make sure of is that I, I never like to feel like I'm in a position of having to compete with my own colleagues for uh, for my students' attention. Um, and I do tend to be more flexible about deadlines um, than than my colleagues. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not unique in that respect, but um, but it's important that things still be kept along. I, I, I like to be flexible because um, you're grad students and therefore you're under a lot of stress. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. But um, what I caution against is that flexibility becoming a situation, leading to a situation where whatever you have for me ends up. Um, always falling to dead last um, in, the, in the priority list. So uh, it's so. Um, as, as, as you know, as you get into your careers, as as, as, as you grow up in them and so forth, and get more experienced, you will often find yourself in a position of having to balance and juggle things that are. Um, some of them will have an imminent deadline attached to them and some will not. Uh, you, someone's going to be breathing down your neck for certain things and not for others. But they all have to move along anyway. 
Um, so sometimes the push is going to come from someone else, and, and other times the push is going to come from you. Um, and it's, a, it's an important uh, instinct uh, uh, to develop. So um, because I, I do have in mind to, you know, if it's going to come a point, it, I assure you it's not imminent, but it's going to, but where I'm going to want to um, move to other chapters and, and, and cover more things. Um, and, uh, oh, okay, Taylor, you're still here. Good. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that um, uh, um, that things keep moving along um, that way. So, uh, so, so please keep that in mind. Um, so, uh, yeah, so whether it's, you know, here during class or between class, um, you know, uh, any issues, any difficulties, let me know, and we'll just uh, keep everybody moving along. So. Okay, so I will um, come on, end the recording. <laughs>